Hi, and welcome back. In the previous chapters, we addressed some of the principles and strategies which lead to optimization of production in aquaculture facilities. In this chapter, I will be addressing some of the basic principles of disease diagnosis on the farm and will be providing several examples. Let's go into the farm. Well, you want to observe what's going on in the farm because this is part of what you need to do. This is part of what we need to do. You need the expertise. You walk into the farm. You need to be able to recognize clinical symptoms, not only what is abnormal, but what is normal. You don't need to be an expert knowing that there is a serious problem in this tilapia pond. This is a population of tilapia suffering from TILV. You want to look in the fish. You want to see what is happening in terms of clinical signs. You know, this is part of the diagnostic process. This is part of understanding what is the cause of mortality. We're looking at the eyes of these tilapia. We see these opacities. We see this cataract. Okay, that to us is saying, oh, this may be TILV as we walk into this farm, into this tilapia farm. So we want to observe and see what's out there in the field. Obviously, growth pathology. You know, you look at these fish, this may be, well, maybe streptococcus to you, maybe supersaturation, which is the case with this hybrid striped bass. Well, some things are more evident, you know, parasites in the fish, ulcerative disease, some deformities here, development disease in this bream population. Does anyone want to take a guess? What are we looking at here? This is mycobacterium infection in sea bream. Walking into a shrimp farm this morning, one thing we always do, we look at feces. If we look at tilapia feces and they're floating on the water, we'll go to the owner and say, you probably have hexameter in your population. Hexameter is a flagellate, which is in the intestine of tilapia. Well, we may be seeing these right feces, again, which may be suggestive of vibrio problems, of nutritional problems in your shrimp operations. The differential diagnosis is obviously wider and longer than what I mentioned. You want to look at the intestine of your shrimp, golden brown intestine, as we say it. This shrimp is eating. And if we see here a white intestine, obviously this shrimp has not been eating. Why do animals not eat? They don't eat because they do not feel well. Anorexia is the number one behavioral symptom of disease in aquatic animals. So if we see an animal that is anorexic, has not been fed, the intestine is empty, we obviously need to look deeper into this animal and understand what has caused this. All this intestinal content, as I mentioned, obviously dead animals, this is all what we do with our clients as we walk into the farm. I need to say that we don't only diagnose, but we teach. We believe in teaching. I personally have been teaching for many years. So the goal here is not only to diagnose, but to educate our clients as to what may be happening, what, what is happening in their farm, so they can implement all these practices once we have left. Size disparity, again, we want to have homogenous populations. If we see this, this needs to ring a bell to us and to the farmer in which we are working in. Well, sick fish, sick shrimp, empty intestine. You see here the hepatopancreas being pale versus a healthy animal. White spot disease in shrimp. You, know, you don't need to be a great expert in that, but this is all part of a process which we follow with you, with our clients worldwide as we walk into these facilities. You will be looking at the pleopodes and the gills of the animals when we talk shrimp, black grims, so or a gills or a cramped tail, all these are indications that something is very wrong in the populations of our animals. Let's go on here. So we have finished our observation of growth pathology. The next, I would say, level of diagnosis is doing microscopy, not only doing it, but teaching our clients how to do it. Very simple, very straightforward. There is no reason why any of you as professionals or as farm managers should not have someone on the farm doing this. And as I said, we educate, we teach, we do our wet mounts and we look through the microscope. And let's just quickly go through some of the symptoms which we will be seeing through the microscope. Everything is very straightforward. Everything is simple. And yet the reality of our industry is that the majority of us even as farm managers, as owners, as investors, will not be implementing these very simple tools, simple to learn, simple to implement, and more importantly, simple to draw the right conclusions. So we see melanide gills in the shrimp, and we may be looking at Gregorin's infection here, looking at the hepatopancreas, which leads us to simple, straightforward microscopy, giving us tons of information as to what is happening, whether good or bad, on our shrimp operation. <laughs> 